Seed oils are turning you into a loser. Only a few years ago, it seemed like the only people who cared about GMOs, health and wellness, were the crunchy, liberal, granola, Gwyneth Paltrow goop people. And now, crazily enough, it's the conservatives who seem to be leading the health and wellness craze. But then, 2020 happened. The most ambitious vaccination campaign in our nation's history. So we applaud? I think so. Screw your freedom. A few moments later. In terms of this uh, warning about vaccination and the increased risk of serious neurological complications. These are leaky vaccines. They don't prevent infection or spread. It's like all the stereotypical health and wellness people got amnesia and they stopped questioning what they put in their bodies. And I'm here to say we should all be asking questions when it comes to what we're told is safe and effective in terms of health. It all starts with eradicating seed oils. In 1907, a German chemist named Edwin Kaiser wrote a letter to Procter & Gamble. Yo, check out this bus and concoction I came up with to create a solid fat from a liquid. It's called cottonseed oil. Okay, I obviously took some creative liberties with that letter, but you get the gist. Procter & Gamble bought the patent and in 1911 started convincing wives to cook with what they called Crisco instead of animal fats like lard. Also, not to set off any alarms or anything, Thing, but before it's processed, cottonseed oil is a bitter, murky red substance. In China, it's used as male birth control. It's completely toxic to most animals and has been known to cause organ damage and paralysis. But no fear, our first seed oil is here. The name Crisco was deliberate. Procter & Gamble execs thought it was a perfect mesh of words like crisp, fresh and clean. At that time, no product had ever been as heavily advertised and marketed as this new cooking fat. P&G hired the first ever advertising agency and samples of this groundbreaking kitchen must have quickly showed up on the doorsteps of grocers, restaurants, and even nutritionists. Women were even sent Crisco recipe books with their samples. Things get even more disturbing. There was no such thing as health claim regulations when it came to food labels at this time. And copywriters went crazy saying that cottonseed oil was healthier than animal fats for digestion, despite there being zero scientific evidence. You sit on a throne of lies. The bricks of indoctrination when it comes to industrial made oils being used in our food were being laid and no one knew to stop and ask questions. Cottonseed oil was the gateway for other cheap industrialized oils to be snuck into our foods. Today, 73% of the food supply in America is dependent upon processed foods, and processed foods require seed oils. That's why I believe seed oils are such huge contributors to the rise in obesity, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes that we're facing in America. The entire processed food industry exists because of seed oils. What is a seed oil and what is not? They define seed oils as any vegetable oil that comes from the seed of a plant. Sunflower, canola, linseed, grapeseed, and sesame oils are all common seed oils. These dominate the scene on all cooking shows. What are you? An idiot sandwich. We live in a time of easily accessed food, easily consumed media, easily consumed information, sex, drugs, everything is accessible. And we are miserable. We are dying. And even worse, we are fat. This, this goes on your skin tone. Somebody throw Shamu back in the ocean. What? what if the big food industry created these seed oils in the guise of cheap solutions to make our lives better? But instead, it was a way to get us to be addicted to their products, keeping you enslaved to their ecosystem. Don't believe me? Why are so many restaurant and food brands adding these industrial oils to their food? Seed oils are cheap and they're a cash cow. 73% of the average American's diet consists of processed food. Think about it. How many items in your cabinet are made from canola, palm, sunflower, grapeseed, rapeseed, cottonseed, safflower, peanut, rice bran, margarine, soybean, corn, uh, probably everything. All right, dude, what the flip? Even the items you're told are healthy have seed oils and are therefore considered processed foods. Take this granola, for example. Vegan, non-GMO, USDA organic. 
looks really healthy. But let's look at the ingredients. Sunflower oil, right there. Natural flavor. Now, natural flavor is a landmine because under that term, you can throw anything in there. Red can be a landmine because there's so many bad ingredients that they just sneak in and you don't even think of bread as ever possibly being unhealthy. Pepperidge Farm is one of the worst offenders. Again, you've got branding that has a nice little picturesque barn on it. Must be healthy, no. Whole grain, thin sliced, 100% whole wheat, says 70 calories per slice. This looks good, right? What could be unhealthy about this bread? I love bread. Soybean oil, right on there. Why does bread need to have that? It doesn't. Now I've saved the best for last. Well, by best, I mean worst. And it's not necessarily a product that you think of as healthy, but it's not a product that you think of as unhealthy. It's just kind of something that like everybody uses. And that is coffee creamer. What could be so bad about that? Ah, let me learn you a thing. Coffee Mate is the worst, the worst I could possibly think of that is probably hiding in your cabinet. You're just ruining it. You're look at my lips, you're ruining it. This one in particular says sugar-free all over it, zero grams of sugar. Okay, maybe this is a healthier option for coffee creamer. Not so fast. First thing in the ingredients list, the first item that means the item that is used the most, hydrogenated vegetable oil or palm or soybean, the second ingredient. So first of all, they're telling you right then and there, there's so many seed oils that could be in this dang thing. We don't even know which one. We're just gonna list them all just in case. The second item is corn syrup solids. Right there, GMO City. Natural and artificial flavors. Again, who knows what that means? Not me, not you and a whole bunch of words that I cannot pronounce. And that's the rule that I like to abide by. If I cannot pronounce it, I don't know what it is. And if I don't know what it is, I'm not eating it. So yeah, the financial cost of using these ingredients is lower. Everything that I just talked to you about doesn't cost a lot of money, but at what cost? To understand that, you have to understand how seed oils are made. First, the seeds are gathered from various GMO plants sprayed in glyphosate, red flag number one, then heated to extraordinarily high temps, red flag number two. When the seeds get that hot, the unsaturated fatty acids oxidize. They're then processed with a petroleum-based solvent and are combined with a ton of other chemicals that improve the color and smell so humans won't be turned off by them. Cause you know, it's not like God gave us our senses for a reason to protect ourselves from predators and dangerous poisonous food. You know what's crazy though? You probably can't even taste the rat poison. Oh, it's a joke. When we eat seed oils, we create imbalance between our omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratios. This delicate balance is crucial for our bodies to maintain to remain healthy. However, if our omegas are thrown out of balance, we are subject to major health complications. When our omega-6 intake is excessive, combined with inadequate omega-3 consumption, this can lead to inflammatory issues, such as rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel issues. Additionally, this imbalance heightens your risk for obesity, cardiovascular diseases, fatty liver disease, and cancer. But you know what? I'm not an expert. Guess who is though? Nutritionist, biochemist, and family physician, Dr. Katherine Shanahan. She has said, while our consumption of canola and other vegetable oils has increased dramatically since 1960, illnesses like diabetes and pre-diabetic conditions have increased at almost the same rate. A correspondence, a correlation. Yeah, uh, aluminum, so. Anyway, soups. For Dr. Shanahan, the primary villains in the picture are polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs for short, which are found most readily in vegetable oils. According to Livestrong, approximately only 10% of US adults were classified as having obesity during the 1950s. Oh man, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Between 2011 and 2012, the CDC reported approximately 35% of US adults had obesity. That means obesity among American adults has more than tripled within the last six decades. 
We're not just fat, we're sick. The number of people under age 20 with type 2 diabetes in the US may increase nearly 675% by 2060 if trends continue, according to researchers. How is this happening? Who is doing this to us? How does big food work? Where do they get these seeds? Big ag. Here's a sacred cow I'm about to kill, pun intended. Of course we need farmers, just like we need teachers, for example. But I think we can all agree that just because there are great people doesn't mean that entire industries aren't free of corruption. Big ag grows a surplus of corn and soy in the United States, not because it's necessary, but because it is for huge profit. Picture a family tree of government corruption. You have Big Gov at the top, and it subsidizes Big Ag with $288 billion a year to grow crops that are made into processed foods. And those processed foods are worth $2 trillion globally, with the US making up nearly 38% of all sales. But who really profits? Big Pharma. Because the more sick we are with diabetes and heart disease and cancer from this food, the more desperate we are for their life-saving medication. I can't make it more clear than this. None of these industries care about your food, your health, or you. The only person who cares about you is you. If you're a conservative watching this, by now, it's probably not difficult for you to see the corruption of the FDA because we know how easy it is for an entity like the FBI to be bought by politicians. In short, the leadership in the FBI is politically corrupt. When 2020 happened, big food was our final red pill. It was the last stone of corruption that we turned over. If you're a liberal watching this, big food is likely your first red pill. Welcome to our club! Welcome to our club! All right, so what do we do now? Are you supposed to get rid of everything in your pantry? Yeah, but you're going to feel so much better and your family will thank you. Then you're gonna go to the store and you're gonna avoid any seed oils or fats that inflame. These are not meant for human consumption. They're actually made for machine lubrication. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the f What should you cook with? The best fats are olive oil, coconut oil, ghee, lard, duck fat, avocado oil, grass-fed butter, and beef tallow. If you're eating butter made in a tub, get rid of it. Country crock? More like crop of crack. <laughs> More like crock of crack. Double check always that the butter you're eating isn't whipped with other oils. And it's not just the oil you cook your foods in either. Check every ingredient label. Seed oils are in your salad dressing and almost certainly any and all packaged food, even meat. My favorite seed oil free chips are masa tortilla chips. I like siete as well. For popcorn, I love lesser evils, Himalayan pink salt, try Hue Kitchen for chocolate and crackers and simple mills for chocolate chip cookies that taste just like chips of white, sans poison. Never assume something will be seed oil free just because it says organic or non-GMO, like we noticed earlier. And I have personal experience with this. I was going to buy organic sourdough bread at Whole Foods the other day that they make right there in their bakery in-house. Sourdough bread, right? Should only have salt, water, flour, and starter. They added canola oil. These crooks will do whatever it takes to stuff this crap in your food. Grocery trips may take a little longer because you're taking time to read each label. And it also may cost more. It's up to you to decide when you spend the time and money. Is it going to be during this week's grocery run or your hospital visit? Charge! You know how they say, trust someone until they give you a reason not to? The government has already given us 99 reasons not to trust them, and then some. They don't get any more chances. We're the captain now. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Big food, you've officially been put on notice. Seed oils are just the beginning. Liberty is rising. Seed oils load the gun. A sedentary lifestyle where you're numbing with screens all day pulls the trigger. Don't find yourself on the wrong side of the barrel of the gun. We're coming after you just like you've come after us for decades.